All right, ready first. Today we're going to talk about mission command. Now there's, there's books and papers and PowerPoint slides that abound across our organization about mission command. But really, that talks about the concept of mission man, command. And what I'd like to do is talk about how to emplace mission command at the company level. It all starts with one word. Trust. As your brigade commander, you have my trust. You don't have to earn it. I give it to you freely. I give every one of you, all 4,500 in this brigade, my trust. Because I know you're doing your best. But I put the onus on me to earn yours every day. I must earn your trust. And I have to do that by making good decisions, by giving you the proper resources, by understanding your challenges, and communicating to you in an effective manner. If you have trust in your organization, then you have mission command. Mission command is establishing the trust to enable disciplined initiative at your level so that you can accomplish the commander's intent. You can see an opportunity and seize it because you know that I have your back and that I trust you to make decisions. Now, I believe there's, once we've established trust, there's three elements of mission command. The first are authorities. What are your authorities? What do you have the ability to make a decision on? What do you need to come and seek guidance? I owe you that. I owe you your left and right limit. As a commander in this organization, you need to know what you can sui sponte on, what you can move forward, what you can push and lead the organization through in order to truly have mission command founded on trust. The second, accountability. Just like I said, the hardest lesson a young lieutenant has to learn is how to look another man or woman in the eye and tell them they're not doing their job or they're doing a great job. That personal engaged leadership, holding people accountable. We do this several ways in the Army. We do it through counseling statements. We do it through personal engaged leadership, personal interaction. We do it through NCOERs and OERs. But mainly, we do it by enforcing the standard. We must hold people accountable. And when they aren't, and we, when they're not meeting the standard, then what I tell you is that you need to remove some authorities. Now, we're really good at removing authorities, and we push it all the way up until the only person that can sign a DA Form 31 is well above your level. My position is, let's remove the authorities. So you go into the three R's. If, someone's, if you're holding someone accountable and they're not meeting the standard, you got to remove the authority, retrain, and then reissue that authority. Because all of that gets back to trust. They broke trust a little bit, you're removing the authority, and then you reissue it. If not, then you're going to retain all the authority at your level. You're losing trust, and we're not losing our ability to mission command. So let's focus on that. The third, and probably the foundation of these three, is leader development. So we're developing our leaders to be experts at their warrior task and drills to be engaged leaders that focus not only on the mission but on their men and women under them. But that leader development, making them absolutely focused on the mission, on their task and drill, and on their soldiers, okay, allows them to understand how to be, hold people accountable, how to issue and remove authorities, and ultimately, these three equal mission command. So if you have these in your organization, authorities, accountability, leader development, 
then Mission Command, founded on trust, will abound. Ready first.